By default, when we use eBGP, this requires two Cisco routers to be directly connected. If they're not directly connected, they'll fail to form a neighbor adjacency. And the reason is that eBGP uses a TTL value, a time to live value of one for BGP packets. Each time a BGP packet traverses a device and each time any packet traverses a device for that matter, we know that the TTL is decremented by one. And once that reaches zero, that packet is discarded. So if we have a TTL value of one and we have a topology like we see here, where the BGP routers are not directly connected, that packet will be discarded and it will never reach the BGP peer. If you look at our topology, you can see we have three routers. We have R1 in Autonomous System 65100. We have R3 in AS65200. And in the middle, we have R2, which is a non-BGP router. In a special case such as this, where two eBGP routers are not directly connected, we need to use BGP multi-hop. I'll also point out that this command is only used with eBGP, and it's not used with iBGP. The first thing we want to do on R1 and R3 is to create some static routes. These static routes are going to make sure that R1 and R3 are able to reach one another. So from R1 first, let's go under global configuration mode and let's say IP route and we're looking to point to R3 20.1.1.2. We'll use an all 255's mask and the next hop interface IP address is router two to which we're connected 10.1.1.1 so that's in place let's jump to router three and we'll do something very similar we'll say ip route and to get to router one at 10.1.1.2 we'll use an all 255 subnet mask and the next hop ip address we want to use is 20.1.1.1 so that's good let's break out of there let's try a quick ping to router one to make sure that's successful, and it is. So now we have communication between router one and router three. So now we can configure eBGP. Let's go back over to router one. We're already under global configuration mode. So let's create our BGP instance by saying router BGP 65100. I'll make a router ID, BGP router hyphen ID of 1.1.1.1 and I want to say neighbor and the neighbor is going to be R3 at 20.1.1.2 and the remote autonomous system for that is 65200. So that's good. Let's go over to R3 and we'll do something similar. Let's go under global configuration mode, router BGP 65200. We'll set the router ID to 3.3.3.3 .3 and we'll say neighbor. Our neighbor is going to be R1 at 10.1.1.2 and the remote autonomous system that we want is 65100. And actually let's go ahead and advertise our network as well since we're doing that. We'll say network 20.1.1.0 24 bit mask. So that takes care of that back on R1. Say network 10.1.1.0. 24 bit mask. So that's a normal, fairly typical BGP configuration in most cases. But if we break out of here on R1 and we say show IP BGP neighbors and hit enter, you'll notice that although we do have a neighbor recognized 20.1.1.2, which is of course R3. The BGP state is in the idle state, so it hasn't completed the neighbor adjacency. And that's because we've ran into that issue where our TTL has expired and we're not able to become eBGP neighbors. Now we can overcome this through eBGP multi-hop. So let's break out of here. Let's go back under global configuration mode. Let's say router BGP 65100, and let's use eBGP multi-hop to increase our TTL value so that we can have our BGP packets actually reach router three. So we'll use another neighbor command, 
and the neighbor is 20.1.1.2. And the keyword we want to use is ebgp hyphen multi hop. If we look at contextual help, you'll see that we have the ability to set this to any number between one and 255. That's our TTL value. Now it's important to note here that if you don't specify a TTL value, it's going to default to 255. So it's a best practice to set this TTL exactly to what you need in order to reach your non directly connected BGP router. In our case, we know that we only need two hops. So we'll use two and hit enter to complete that. Let's jump over to router three. And let's do a very similar thing. We're already under router BGP 65200 configuration mode. So we'll say neighbor, we'll say the router one address of 10.1.1.2. And we want to use eBGP hyphen multi hop. And we want to set the TTL value to two. Let's go back to router one where we initially ran those verification commands. And you can see that we just had a neighbor come up. We just now had R3 20.1.1.2 come into the upstate. So it appears that we've corrected our issue. Let's again run that same verification command, show IP BGP neighbors. And now in fact, you can see that our BGP state is established. At the time that I used this verification command, it had been up for 17 seconds. So everything looks as though it is working exactly as we would want to see. We saw those messages pop into our console to verify that. And now we're able to overcome that non BGP router that's in between our eBGP peers. So that's a very simple way that you can use BGP multi hop to traverse a non BGP router in your network. It's possible that you have a router maybe at the edge of your autonomous system that doesn't support BGP, or maybe that's at the edge of an autonomous system that you're trying to connect into as an ISP. That's a case where we might want to use BGP multi hop in the real world.